I like to keep a healthy uh, dose of political statements, anti-consumerism, and humor. Like a masked Avenger, someone to save the day. I don't mind that. I used to read comic books. I can dig that. Hey, this is Posted Boy. Welcome to New York. There is a new face that has burst onto the New York City art scene. People call him the anti-consumerist Zorro with a razor blade. His work is all over New York, a city caught up in the midst of a global economic meltdown, in a country going through massive political shifts. Preferring to remain anonymous, this anti-hero lets his art speak for itself. Poster Boy cuts out letters and images from the advertising posters in New York subways. He then rearranges them to create his very own cut and paste punk aesthetic. In the subways, they're like giant vinyl stickers and they retain their adhesive. So when you cut into them, you cut out a specific part. You can repaste them onto another surface. It makes it easy to do collage right there. So my tool in the subway is my razor blade alone, nothing else. More and more of these redesigned posters have been appearing in the subway, creating a public gallery of guerrilla art. The satire created by Poster Boy in the posters is often as sharp as the razor blade he uses. As long as you have human beings living on this planet, there's always going to be issues and drama to address. Sometimes you make the most powerful political statements through humor and vice versa. You can make an ass of yourself and be funny making a political statement. So I like to include everything. But Poster Boy is not just one individual. My idea of Poster Boy is as a collective, I'd like it to be as decentralized as possible. You know, we don't have meetings and no one gives any orders or takes any orders. It's just whoever is willing to take up a razor for the cause. I set guidelines personally for myself when I go out and do the post boy stuff. I don't, I don't damage people's personal property. I try to keep it as public as possible. I was not scared the first time. Climb up, cut it down, come down, and take off. It wasn't me. <laughs> and I don't even know most of the people that uh, take part in post boy. It's just random acts of uh, vandalism or art, whatever, you, whatever your viewpoint is, it's without my permission. And it's posted on the internet or in magazines. Some of it's not mine, but it's all Poster Boy in my opinion. Poster Boy is preparing for an exhibition in this alternative art gallery in New Jersey. He explains why being anonymous is important to him. If I was given this interview, I had you know my face on camera, well then people would probably feel less likely to take it up and uh, participate because then it'd be, it'd be, it would be about me. But if I stay anonymous, they'd feel a little more inclined to take up a raise themselves. I also conceal my identity because of arrest too because some of the stuff is worth a lot of money. I'm, what I'm standing on right now is probably a few thousand dollars. But despite the legality questions that inevitably surround Poster Boy, his ideas grow out of a belief in something good for the public at large. The advertisement is there, it's public, it's in your face. You know, you can't, you can, it's not like you can choose to look away. I mean, it's, it, it's embedded in your subconscious. You walk by it every day to go to work or go home and people can't choose to turn off. It's different from like a magazine that you can close or a TV you can shut off. The stuff, like I said, is in your face and most of these advertisers and firms they probably don't even live in the places they put up the billboards and advertisements. They don't allow the public to interact with those same spaces that they pay for, so I, seem, I think that's a little unfair. What I try to say with the posters, it depends on what's available on a platform or the text that's available, depending on the imagery that's available. What I can appropriate is such an easy target. And depending on what you say specifically, depends on what words are available, what words you can physically make. Because then you started making the work for other people, worrying about what the hell they think. You can't do that. So this man's art is another man's vandalism. But he continues to have an unwavering belief in what he is doing. I want today to exist as an idea of what is possible when the intent is true and pure as far as art is concerned or other things, but yeah.